It's time for a blooper flashback featuring one temperamental thoroughbred. His name may as well be Berserk because he goes absolutely crazy in the winter circle after a race, dragging his trainer around like a rag doll. The reason for the horse's discontent? The blanket they tried to drape on him was made of wool, too hot for a sweaty stallion after a big race. Hello, I'm Walter Cronkite. From horses who can't stand still, to skaters who can't stand up, to runners that won't slide down. The 20th century has given us quite a ride in the world of sports. So hang on as we bring you the best of the 20th century sports bloopers. It's time for A Century of Sports Bloopers, Volume 2. The American sports scene is littered with little bodies strewn about its playing field. Given our penchant for youthful recreation, accidents are bound to happen. Organized sporting events serve as a fertile environment for fantastic follies. There are embarrassments aplenty. The general rule in sports is that you need two teams to play a contest, but where, as here, one team fails to show up, the team on the floor scores baskets without any competition. The referee allows them to inbound the ball. The opposing unit soon arrives too little, too late, too tragic to bear. Adults also attempt, with futility, less organized sporting activities. It is one thing to fall down the mountain, but quite another when the mountain falls on you. Indeed, we have taken our passion for recreation to bizarre extremes. Watch carefully as these skiers flirt with disaster. The replay reveals a much smaller mountain than was present when these two wackos began their run. Amazingly, no one was injured. When it comes to amazing, however, one moment in sports reigns supreme. With no time on the clock and Cal needing a touchdown to defeat Stanford, they attempted a desperation play on the final kickoff. They scored the winning touchdown, knocking over a tuba player in the process. The granddaddy of amazing sports plays has spawned a few copycats. This Canadian football play looks rather similar to the Cal Stanford ending without the same successful result. Sapunjas back to Flutie. Flutie throws it back to Bruce or Ken Moore. Moore tosses it out. Wiggins has it. He's the man who started it all. And it's still loose. Penalty flag on the play is the Stampeders. <laughs> And it's picked up now by Charles Anthony. This high school play was also reminiscent play of Cal uh, Stanford. Uh -oh. He throws it back. Uh -oh. this, is, this is a Stanford play. <laughs> there, you go. there it is. Look at it. They still got it going. The they still layer. got it going. Gives it off again. Somebody's got to get behind him. Nobody's behind there him. There it is. To comment on the will to succeed, we have engaged the thoughtful ruminations of one General George S. Patton. He made it! Oh my goodness! The story of sports in the 20th century is willpower. The ability to hang on and persevere against all odds. Now, what do I mean by that? When you roll the dice, you can roll seven or you can come up snake eyes. Or sometimes, you don't come up at all. 
take, I don't know, one, two, even three tries to get it right. Now when you get knocked down, you gotta pick yourself right up off the canvas. When you're facing a force stronger than yourself, try to hold your ground. There'll be barriers in your way. They may be easy to open. Well then, you know what? Open them up and walk right through the dang things. Sometimes, they may need a little push. Do what you have to do then. Push them down. You have to learn to be resourceful. When confronted with an obstacle, go over it if you have to. Get on top if necessary. Go right on through the dang thing. I don't care how you do it, do it. Now don't be indecisive. It'll ruin you. Wait a minute, one official says yes, one says no, it's not good. Talk it through and get it right. Lack of confidence will do you in. You may have to change your mind once, but for heaven's sake, don't look like this umpire. He's out. No, he's safe. No, he's out. Mr. Squishy Washy here makes me sick. Now listen up. Make your call and stick with it. Who are you gonna call? We're not sure. Who are you gonna call? We're not sure. We're not sure. Who are you gonna call? It's the one entry. They're one, two. We're not sure. Well, be sure. Like this guy, whose passion and intensity have to be admired. This time, three times, the third time is a charm. Dallas is going down, Gary. Only Buffalo is going to win it. Dallas is going down. You want your children to be like him. No Teach them to break down life's barriers at any cost. <laughs> Once they set the example, others will follow Keep and right. follow and follow. <laughs> the simple fact is, greatness comes only to those who dare to succeed. Thank you for your time. General George S. Patton, United States Armed Forces. And now, another edition of Sports Almanac. The date, January 1st, 1954. On this day at the Cotton Bowl, Rice was beating Alabama and was on the way to another score when the Crimson Tide's Tommy Lewis darted off the bench and made a touchdown-saving tackle. He then returned to his seat on the bench. The high-angle camera clearly shows Lewis blindsiding the ball carrier from the sideline. The result of Lewis's action, first and goal to go for Rice as they went on to defeat Alabama 28-6 on this date, January 1st, 1954. Sideline annex aren't confined to opposing players. Rabbit soccer fans have been known to interfere with the action. This fine gentleman found himself crossing a very dangerous street, but he did look both ways. Attention deficit disorder can be a dangerous malady for sideline standers. The newfangled Arena Football League doesn't even have sidelines, exposing everyone, even coaches, to field action gone awry. When it comes to skating, this goalie makes a less than graceful exit. Given that animals have a mind of their own, they sometimes exercise this free will in ways that diminish their chances of success. Here, a youngster exercises his free will with gusto. After being whistled for his fifth and final foul, the youngster foregoes the bench and chooses to leave the gymnasium instead. Finally, let's focus our attention on this fellow here, who's about to leave the screen. Not only did he leave the screen, but he also leaves the gymnasium. His defender, right here, has no idea where he went. But the point guard knows exactly where he went. He's out in the hallway, getting ready to run around through the side door. He gets the pass and buries the three-pointer. A play for the ages. Once every five years or so, a blooper comes along that stands out ahead of the rest. Here are a few more headline bloopers for your perusal. And 
now a man famous for using his head, Albert Einstein. Like all fields of endeavor, sports is governed by physical laws of nature. Permit me to break some of these down for you. Now, we could go round and round and round, but we would always end up with the same profligacy. And that is, gravity governs all sports activities. Gravity holds that what goes up must come down. An object tossed upward inevitably falls in a downward misdirection. Or, to put it another way, keep your eye on the ball. But don't be literal about it. Everything is constantly being pulled down by the Earth's gratuitous force. Unbuckled pants have a strong tendency to fall about one's ankles. Pulling them up and strutting about is a common reaction when confronted with gravity's unbridled ratatatatatui. In sports, we sometimes see two forces collide at astounding speeds. When these two such forces are of equal power, there should be an equality of result. This brings me to my concept of friction. You can spot the effects of friction most readily when the player slides into a base. Too much friction is bad. Now watch the effect that friction has on this slide, which some of my colleagues have labeled head first to the hospital. Notice in the replay the use of his chin as a break. Every action will prompt an equal and opposite reaction. And notice how, in this case, the player acts in an inhospitable manner, causing the opposing player to react to the formidable fumigations by retrograding receivingly. This, in turn, creates reactions all over the place, only to be halted by the prospects of a large equine entering the fray. You've all heard of my theory of relativity. If your pole gets stuck between your legs, you will not be able to have any more relatives. Here's another example of my relative theory. So remember, gravity can hurt preponderously. Equal power will yield equal results. And finally, there's my relativity theory that holds that certain sports activities will harm your ability to create new relatives. This clip also conveniently illustrates that every action will create an equal and opposite reaction as one side reacts to the other. Thank you for your time. As we flip through the pages of 20th century sports, we see a new type of blooper emerging. Where competitors traveling at relatively high speeds get absolutely annihilated, totally destroyed, completely rushed. In a word, out of control. Extreme bloopers, we now call them. The possibility of getting hurt does not in and of itself qualify as an extreme blooper. This blooper of a three-year-old child crawling around the court during a game is extremely absurd, but not extreme as it is currently defined. While this center fielder will soon be in extreme pain, the blooper is not extreme, nor is this one, where the player scores a goal with his body. No, the sport itself must be extreme, not the act to qualify as an extreme blooper. The proliferation of home video cameras has enabled us to capture classic moments. Glass usually shatters when subjected to such tremendous force. Equipment, in general, is a wonderful source of folly because when it breaks, all heck breaks loose with it. Here, a jockey sulky overturns and the jockey, quite cleverly, hitches a ride with a competitor. Equipment sometimes ends up where it doesn't belong. 
Yes, broken equipment can create a real problem for competitors. Speaking of problems, my Hollywood friend Jack Nicholson has a few he'd like to discuss. Take me out to the ball game. Hey, thanks, Walt. Celebrities like Seinfeld and me, we can't hack the paparazzi. Look at them. Serves you right. And you too. These jokers hound us to death. Lurking behind bushes, setting people up. We're gonna get you back. Yeah, Brucey, you tell them. Feel good, lens boy? We can't even take a leisurely swim without being passed. <laughs> Can you handle the truth? The truth is, we go out of our way to run into these guys. Clowns. Bet you're having trouble saying, smile now, Joker boy. <laughs> it just ticks me off to no end. These guys make life so freaking hard. Excuse me, miss. Can you just hand me that trash can? Thank you, sweetie. Pet P number two. Athletes trying to be TV personalities. Uh, I just kind of played for the high school stars. <laughs> you just kind of can't talk, pal. I forgot about that part. I knew I was supposed to say something else. We're going to be on TV bloopers, man. Pet peeve number three, broadcasters who can't broadcast. The stars home opener is April 16th. <laughs> Here's one athlete who can act. Whoop-de-damn do! He's got Babe Ruth waddle down pat. <laughs> Pet peeve number four: athletes dancing and singing. What do you think, Eric? <laughs> it's a hell of a joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. A joke for the birds. And I'm not talking about the St. Louis Cardinals. No, I'm talking about all the folks who continue to tick me off. They all need a little humility. Take that, Mr. Announcer Fella. <laughs> They're get, the show must go on. They're going to wrap up <laughs> their series with laughing. There is an art to sports commentary as these announcers aptly demonstrate. Equal to none is second as they disappear into the fog. From now on, you're on your own. Then there's a gap of three to Dola Hicka Makarakadola, and then it's Dicka Haka Makarakadola. And the trailer is Dola Rola Rola Rakadaka Molahola. Audacious Tatas. I'm no bimbo. Passing the North Pole, passing the half mile pole. Into the far turn. Come out. Hello. Horses. Where are you? Here they come. I know you're in here someplace. Things are going to happen. On here. camera, McCoy. sports announcers and reporters can face unimagined pearls. Here, sports reporter Joe Rocco goes toe to toe with an umpire on live television. We're holding up the game for this. We're not holding up the game. We're on live TV, sir. Fine. Okay. Shut the game. We'll be 30 seconds. Okay. Thank you. We're not holding up the game. All right. The umpires are giving us a little heat here. Okay. We'll be done in about 30 seconds. No, you won't. You'll be done now. Okay. I'm going to get thrown out here on opening night. They're calling. All right, they're cutting the lights. We got to go. Uh, they want us out of here. The biggest game in pirate history turned out to be one of the best. Brian Bailey nearly gets blasted to the heavens as a cannon shoots off during his report. Let somebody just shut the guts out. Everybody. It seems like cannons are an occupational hazard. The heart, the guts, the soul of this Maple Leaf team. Unless somebody just shut the guts out of everybody downstairs, of course, is Doug Gilmore. Interruptions are just part of the news business, as this polite announcer discovered. And... Sorry. Okay, we're in the middle of doing this here. I know. I know, I'm sorry. Oh, yes. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, sorry, okay. That will do it in sports for a Tuesday night. Okay, thanks, Jake. Well, how's that for a little chit-chat? We'll be back tomorrow right after this. <laughs> we are done. Thanks, Jake. You bet. We'll be back after a commercial break, folks. Stay tuned. Lowry Holmes and Sugar Ray Leonard symbolized the athletes as endorsers trend in the mid-70s with this Ford commercial. You don't have to be tough and big. 
You are talking about trucks, of course. Oh. I'm going to get it. Wait for and it's got great knockout looks. So, Larry, you don't have to be big to be tough. You are talking about trucks, of course. <laughs> <laughs> So, Larry, you don't have to be big to be tough. <laughs> huh? So, Larry, you don't have to be big to be tough. For Walter Wade, you got a heavyweight mop. Take the camera. Action. So, Larry, you don't have to... Oops, that's too close. <laughs> now, for some more profound words, another fighter, Mike Tyson. I am Mike Tyson here with some thoughts about sports. You know, all sports are dirty, filled with cheap shots. I mean, look at these two jockeys here, whipping each other during a race. Uh, who says boxing's the only sport where, where they hit each other? This guy hits his own teammate. My kind of guy. Okay, you, you could say it's an accident. Okay, say it. It doesn't bother me, because I know the truth. The truth is, boxing's full of accidents, too. This dirty fight is an accident. No one did anything on purpose. This fight here, it, it, it's a mirage. See, it didn't really happen. When I told my opponent I'd make her my girlfriend, I was just being friendly. Boxing is a noble sport. Where else can you find a boxer's mother coming to the aid of her son with a shoe? That's very noble. That woman's a noble warrior. When they said I bit my opponent's ear, that wasn't true. A horse bit his ear. See? Right on the ear. No, 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 wait a second. A dog bit his ear. That's what happened. Hollyfield was playing football and the dog bit his ear. See, it was a dog, not me. Boxing's got a real raw deal. We don't have rest poking our eyes out or cheerleaders knocking us upside the head. No, we have respect for our opponents. We don't try to show no one up. Good sportsmanship is our credo. Like that word, credo? I learned it in a joint. What a great guy. He wants to sit down with his opponent. I worry a little about losing my mind, forgetting things. Oops, an accident. Your winner by technical knockout. Here's... I just hope I don't end up like this guy. Chavez! From blooper classics to classic bloopers, follow the bouncing ball. You might think that's a once-in-a-lifetime occurrence, but it's not. As they say, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Unusual moments, of course, are not confined to the basketball court. This extra base hit results in an RBI and also a bizarre double play at home. Now here's an interesting baseball image, something you don't see very often. Same thing with this golf swing. <laughs> Yes, the power of the haywire sports moment can make us lose our grip, fall over, and stumble with laughter. And now, here's someone who knows a lot about stumbling, George Bush. Hey, my fellow Americans. About 60 years ago, my grandpappy, George Bush the 12th, played football, liked to jump, did grandpappy. Always jumping around, never stood still. Taught me sports skills. There I am with the puff. Oopsie. Shot score. <laughs> That's me as an itsy bitsy kid. Grandpappy taught me to swim. Didn't mention how slippery it was. Played some football too. The shoe fit, so I wore it. <laughs> Had a great life. Sure have. Thinking back, may have missed some opportunities. No doubt about it. No question, no argument here. May have whiffed a few times. <laughs> May have made a few wrong turns along the way. Know what I mean? But I tried to stay ahead of the field like a rabbit, a swift running hare, always ahead of the crowd. 
Bowled over Michael Dukakis in 88. <laughs> yeah, loved to bowl. Loved to throw strikes. Loved to, oops, as president, used my head plenty. The old noggin. My China trip was a knockout. Learned the language. All of my Asian, uh, Chinese particularly, brothers and sisters out here. Sounds like something out of China, doesn't it? And you're right. I agree with you 100%. Thank you. Had a few disappointments as president, though. A few little mishaps, as they say. A few slip-ups. Couple of trip-ups. You know, you fall down, but you pick yourself up again. Never gave up, though. Tried to score the big TD again in 1992 against Clinton, but fell before I reached the goal line. The second election got off to a bad start. Bad, real bad. Kind of missed an opportunity there. Didn't keep my eye on the bill. I mean, ball kind of blew it, just came up short, lost control, very disappointing. The world knows the results, wasn't pretty. Got kicked around by Clinton, lost big, big, but I'm happy because I made most of my goals. They were tough goals. I've had some great thrills. Amazing how I picked up my spirits after my defeat. Picked them right up, put everything in its place. Truly amazing, the resilience of the human spirit. Yes, sir. Sports in the 20th century's willpower. The ability to hang on and persevere against all odds. Gravity holds that what goes up must come down. Sixty years ago, my grandpappy taught me sports skills. <laughs> That's me as an itsy-bitsy kid. This is Walter Klondike for A Century of Sports Bloopers, Volume 2. I hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs>